Three Boolean variables give eight possible combinations, as we can see here. Therefore, we need a map with eight areas. These four zeros represent not A. These four ones represent A. These two and these two making four represent not B. These two ones and these two ones actually represent B. And then we can see we have four zeros and they all represent not C. And finally we have four ones underneath the C and they represent C. Now here we can see we have not A and not A is represented by this area here which you can see has four squares. These four squares or four areas if you prefer is A. Then we can come up here and say we have a not B and those four squares represent not B. Then we have a B which is represented by these four areas or four squares. Then we have a C which is represented by these four squares here. Then we have a not C which is split as you can see where two of them are here and two there making four in total. If we have a look at this which is not A and there's the not B then that area there corresponds to not A and not B. If we have a look at the not A again but this time compare it with the B we can see we have those two squares and those squares represent not A and B. If we have a look here we can see we have A and not B which corresponds to those two squares so that is A and not B. Then we have the A together with the B and these are the squares here that represent that which is A and B. Then if we take the not B with the not C we have the, those two squares and that's not B and not C. I take the not B again but this time I take it with the C we have those two squares and that is not B and C. If I now take the B together with the C then that squares there is B and C. If we now take the B again but this time with the not C then these two squares are represented by B and not C. Now if we take the not A together with the C, we have these two squares, and they're known as not A and C. Then we can take the not A with the not C, which means we can see they're split there, so we have that, and that representing not A and not C. And here we have the A and the C, which are these two squares, and that is A and C. And then we take the A with the not C, as you can see, which is this square and this square here. And both of those squares represent the area of A and not C. Let's have a look at this square here. And we can see that in the not A, not B and not C area. So that square is known as not A and not B and not C. Let's have a look at this square here. And we can see that in the A, the B and the C Consequently, that's known as A and B and C. If we consider this square, it should be clear that that is represented by the A, the not B and the not C, and they're all landed together. If we consider this particular square here, we should be able to identify that that is not A, B and not C, all landed together. It is clear that every square represents a min term, as you can see by this. If we look at this min term here, we can see that is not A, not B, and C, which is this area here. So it is into this area that we draw a 1. If we look at this min term, we can see that that represents not A, B, and C, which is this particular area here. Consequently, we draw a 1 in here. If we consider this min term, we can see that is A, not B, and C, which is this area, and we draw a 1 in there. If we consider this min term here, we can see that's A, B, and C, which is this area, therefore we'll draw a 1 in here. Once we've plotted 
we draw a loop around all of the ones, a loop of four in this particular case. This particular area of the loop, we can see that in the not A, and this particular area is in the A. Now it overlaps these variables here. When it overlaps the same variable, then we discount it. If you look at this area, it's in the not B, and if you look at this area here, it's in the B, so it overlaps the Bs, and in this particular case, that means we ignore the Bs. That's not part of the, the answer for the loop. These two areas are the not C. Now, none of the loop is in the not C area. Consequently, that's not part of our answer for what the loop represents. If we shade it all in, just to make it clear, we can see all of it is in C. Therefore, we can say that the loop is represented by just C. So F becomes C, so up here we can now say that this expression here that we've plotted minimizes to just C. The next video in the playlist will look at other examples of three variable Carnot maps.